Oh, we are here. We are here. You got me? Okay. Okay. You're, you're fab. Okay, I'll see you. I'll see you in a couple hours. Hour. Okay. This is gonna be fun. Here we go. and welcome to our special coverage of the 2011 Seattle International Film Festival. I'm Nancy Guppy. We are here at McCall Hall for the kickoff of this glorious three-week festival featuring over 400 films. Now, it's opening night, lots of fun going on. We're gonna walk the red carpet. Uh, we're gonna rub elbows with the VIPs. I'm hoping to kind of steal some stuff out of their goodie bags. We'll see how that goes. We're gonna talk to all sorts of filmmakers, especially uh, filmmakers who have made movies here in the Northwest. And we're gonna show you clips of all the films that you won't wanna miss this year, including this one. It's called The Intruder, and it features thousands of very angry cobra snakes. <laughs> this, is, this is Deborah Person. This is girl talk here. Yeah, this is, have some girl talk. So Deborah, tell us what your title is. My title is Managing Director. Of the, of the Film Festival. Exactly. Of, of SIF Cinema. Of SIF, of the whole thing. The whole shebang. The whole thing. So we have the festival, we have SIF Cinema, we yep. have our educational programs. All of it? All of You're it. You're at the head of that. Yes. Um, so uh, what do you want to tell us specifically about this year's festival? Anything we need to know, our viewer has to know. Well, this year is very exciting for all of us because it's the festival that marks our new, uh, the first year we have our new film center. Right. Which so is here that, on the grounds of the, of the city yes, center. Yes. In fact, it's just over there, yep. just a few steps away. Yep. So that truly is uh, thrilling to me and to all of us. And, and, and you'll be, it'll be part of the festival this year. People will be there to watch films this year? Not films. We're going to have some of our educational programs in there, our Great. digital media lab and everything. But right. it, uh, it's been an amazing journey. Yeah. And it's just everybody yeah. from staff to volunteer to board, we're just thrilled that we finally made yeah. this happen. Yeah, so. your new digs. Your new new digs. digs. Right First on. permanent home ever. Wow. So. Yeah. After all these years. 37 years. Oh my God. <laughs> finally you get your own home. Exactly. You're no longer renting. Oh, that's hilarious. Well, congratulations. Thank you And congratulations so much. on another great obviously another great festival absolutely yeah, yeah. all right well we are here with the director of tonight's opening night film the first grader and you are justin chadwick i am yeah Very from, nice all the way from the uk oh, from the uk yeah. welcome to our beautiful city oh it's amazing to be here yeah yeah like, someone told me it's the biggest film festival in the world it is over 400 films Brilliant. right right and we have sun, and that's yeah. an amazing thing for I know. Seattle. I, everybody said it was going to be raining, it was going to be like Manchester home, but right. it's been really beautiful weather. For you, for you. <laughs> Just so for how us. are you feeling about uh, the, tonight, and how are you feeling about the film opening the festival? I'm, you know, I'm really excited. I mean, it's a real, it's a, it's a real film for audiences, this film, you know, and it's a heartfelt film, it's a true story about a real guy, a real uh, period of history that Britain and Kenyan shared. And um, audiences have really responded to it. It's really uplifting, emotional, heartbreaking, funny. So to be opening this festival, this important festival, which is, you know, so supported yes. by film lovers, it's just an honour for us. We're it's so exciting. We're a film town. Yeah. Um, well, how did you get a hold of this story, or how did this come about for you? Well, it was on the front cover of the, of the New York Times and the LA Times um, about this old man that had gone back to school, and he spoke at the UN. He came to America, he spoke about the power of education, and he became a Guinness Book of Record holder because he was the oldest man to ever go to first grade. This is a primary school. I heard on the radio. They meant children. They said everybody. Why does someone as old as you want to go to school? I want to learn to read. So I went and met this man and started talking to him, and then the story started to emerge about this past that Britain had had that had been 
hidden, um, been, all the records have been destroyed. So, yeah, it came really from him. Because the Kenyans didn't know about it, right. with independence, yeah. the story was lost because, like so many African countries, when independence came, yeah. it was a time to forget the past and move sure. on. So, right. yeah, it's a, it, was a, it was an amazing experience because we shot it in Kenya. We, we took a very small group of people into Kenya and we used Kenyans, you know, Kenyan real actors, people. crew, and real people. The children you see in the film are real. Uh, school, no one was excluded, they were all included, it's one school that I cast as the film and all the characters within the film are from that school, so these are children that have never seen a movie, never seen a TV camera or a TV set, you know, so yeah, it's incredible. Well, congratulations and have a great night. Thank you so have a great night. We have to learn from our past. We must not forget. We must be better. Well, this is one of my very favorite, one of my very favorite girls here, Beth Barrett. Beth is um, the head of well, programming. Recently. I am, I'm programming director. Yeah, you are the program. I'm, yeah. I'm weirdly close. Yeah, I know, it's right? Odd, it's, it's a little it? personal I, don't, I know, it's a little personal. <laughs> that's, that's a different show. Oh, now show. you're weirdly close. I know, that's now you're weirdly close. <laughs> so, um, so let's talk a little bit, just give our viewers a kind of a, a rundown on the Northwest Connections program. Oh, what a good program we have this year. We have 35 films, 17 features, 18 shorts, all produced in and around the Northwest. Yep really so strong. The community here is so supportive and strong and everyone works on everyone's feature. So you're talking to uh, Megan Griffiths, yes. who directed a feature, produced another feature. Her producer for the Off Hours also produced a feature. And then Ben Kosolke, yeah. Superman, he shot, shot like every 18 film. of them or something. No, literally like seven of them. It's incredible. Yeah. It's incredible. It's great. So it's it fantastic. must be kind of fun for SIF to have so much local stuff in, yeah. in the festival. Yeah, yeah. no, it's, it's amazing to be able to showcase yeah. what's going on here. Right. In Seattle. And I always like to ask you, um, do you have one film in particular, it doesn't have to be Northwest, that you're just kind of hot to trot for? You know, it's funny. Um, I have a handful of them, but one of them, one. one of them, one of them, oh, oh, it's like a Sophie's Choice, it's so hard. <laughs> it's exactly like Sophie's Choice. <laughs> um, I'm actually really excited about Codependent Lesbian Alien, Space Alien Seek Same. Okay. Codependent, Codependent lesbian, lesbian, alien, space alien, space alien, seek same. same. Yeah, that's, that just flies off I mean, the tongue. Rolls know, right off. Rolls right off. It does. No, it's um, it's a very, it's a definitely a 50s B-movie style yeah. film about three aliens who come to Earth because their emotions are destroying their ozone layer <laughs> and they have to um, find girlfriends yeah. so that they they can save their planet. So their, so their emotions can kind of calm down? Exactly. What, what's funny yes. is that they have zero emotions. Oh. It's super funny. Because they're space aliens. Because they're space aliens. In outer space. So, exactly. Yeah. Do you, did you want to buy a pen or something? Do you have a radio transmitter? Sachet on the carpet? No, I tend to avoid the red carpet. I think you should do one sachet. No, I've done that. No before. sachet? No, no. Will you sachet off the camera right now? We would no, I probably wouldn't do that no, either. There's no sacheting know. gonna happen. Uh, not okay. for me tonight. Anyway. Okay, okay. Mwah. Great see to see you, you man. Yep, yeah, have fun tonight. <laughs> yes, look, look. Megan Griffiths and Lynn Shelton. Hi, kids. Okay, so tell us, tell our, our viewers, uh, well, you can get right in here, hon, um, the name of get your film. Get in here, Lynn. The Off Hours. <laughs> the Off Hours, and um, you shot it, was it in 2010? A year yeah. ago. Just a year about a year ago. ago, yeah. And you have a great part in it as yes, well. I do. Yes, I do. I'm the star, no, I'm not. She's quite good. <laughs> well, Lynn, of course, is um, a, a great director uh, herself, Hump Day, oh, amongst oh, other many, oh, many oh, films. Oh, You're oh, working oh, on a lot of things right now, I'm sure, what, 18, many, 14, many, 18, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, projects. Yeah. How did you know? Uh, I just knew. I just knew. So, but you, your film was in um, uh, Sundance. It was. Right? It premiered there this year. Yeah. But you tell us a little bit about it. It's, it's character-driven drama. It's a character-driven drama about a waitress who works a night shift at a truck stop diner, and she's basically overcoming her own inertia. So, is this your dream come true? Being a trucker. Breaker, breaker. I uh, feel a little lonely out here. Really important to me. Anyway. Put your glasses Ready down for right now. Okay, okay, get your look. Right. Mm, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Oh, hey, that tough. That was a tough <laughs> Northwest girl. You guys, thanks. So congratulations, Megan. It's awesome. Great to see you too. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Nice. 
nice. Gorgeous. <laughs> it's all about the fashion. It's all about the it's fashion. It's all about the fashion. All about the fashion. She knows all about that. You look fantastic. Thank you. And this, oh. Uh, Thank you. It's fake. Beautiful. It's fake. It's always fake. Don't throw paint on her. No, yeah. no, 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 no. Well, you look gorgeous. Thank Good. you. We do have to look at you and your gorgeous outfit. Okay, so it's yeah. a coral a coral gown. Is this vintage? It's not vintage. It's an Arden B. R&B, and, and these are of course real. I may be vintage, but <laughs> those look great. They were mine before she tailored them. For oh herself. really? Yeah. Wow, well, you've so, got good taste. Oh, very, very good taste. <laughs> All right, we are here with uh, director yes. Matt Wilkins. And Matt, what's the film that you've made? Uh, it's called Marrow. Marrow. It's a psychological drama about a woman haunted by something living in the walls of her house. That sounds very scary. It's a tale of ordinary horror, the kinds of things that uh, you know a lot of us will experience in our lives. Uh, people really are haunted by things, um, but uh, oftentimes they're, you know, very ordinary things that, uh, that stick with us, uh, things we can't, we can't get, get out of our heads. Your child has some serious issues, and I'm not sure where it's coming from. Is this a big deal to have your film in set? Pretty excited, yeah. Yeah. Yep, second feature that I, to, to play here, so I'm um, oh, really? happy to be back. Congratulations. So, yeah. yeah, that's really great. And um, are you looking forward to anything in particular yourself here at the festival to see? Besides uh, Marrow, of course. Look, yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing all my friends and hanging out yeah. and uh, having a good time. Yeah. Um, yeah. Great. Well, congratulations on, yeah. on your film being in, in the festival, and we'll look forward to seeing it. Matt right. Wilkins, everybody. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. My fist hungers for justice. That was my fist. Did you see that? I just was like, what? Hi! Pandas walking the carpet. Nice! Look at those shorts. Woo, baby! Do you, you want to kind of fight? Oh, yeah. Show your hands here. Come on. Can I get you? Can I get you? My kung fu is very, my kung fu is very iffy. Are you guys from Seattle? Yeah, we play with the Sounders here. Your Sounders? What, are you, what position? Uh, center mid. And what are you? Uh, center back. And what's your name? Patrick Ianni. Brad Evans. Um, okay, this is a weird thing to ask, but would you guys mind, can I stand in the middle? Would you guys kiss me on the cheek? Stand in the middle. Okay, so okay. On three. One, okay. two, three. Good one, huh? Well done. Fantastic. <laughs> that made my sif. Thanks, guys. Another great film in this year's festival, A Lot Like You, Ellie. Ellie, what's your last name? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. And Pete Droge. Hello. And um, so, Ellie, this is your film, your story. You directed it, wrote it. I mean, it's documentary. Right. Um, so, how is it to have this film at SIF? It's so exciting. It? Oh, my goodness, it's so exciting to be able to have our world premiere yeah. here in Seattle with our hometown crowd. You can't beat it. Yeah. It's amazing. So just kind of in brief, what's the story about? Um, the story is about the journey that I took when, um, so I'm mixed race. My mom is from Korea, my dad is from Tanzania. And um, the story is about the journey I took when I started, started questioning the cultures that I was inheriting and what I would one day be passing down to my kids. And so um, Tom and I, my partner, we quit our jobs and took filmmaking classes and bought one-way tickets to Tanzania. Um, to go and immerse ourselves and learn more about my dad's culture. And it's sort of about what we found when we were there. It's such a male-dominated society. To get the full picture, I would have to interview women on their own. And how did you two connect? Because um, Pete, you do music in the film. Yeah, we met through the editor and fellow producer and co-writer Eric Frith. Uh -huh. who's known for Heart of the Game, among many other great, great projects. Great films, yeah. yeah, yeah. So he, very early on when they were putting together Rough Cut, started to temp in some of my instrumental mixes from a record a few, from a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And the music started to kind of connect with the story, and yeah. soon we officially made me the composer, and I started to create these like rough musical sketches that they used as a temp score, and, and a couple it, years later we had a movie with music. Part of me wished I could take this whole experience and shut it in a closet. 
but my aunt asked me. Now that we've shared our stories with you, what are you going to do about it? What I'm looking forward to is Stephen Schart's uh, treatment, which he did with uh, Sean Nelson. We're going to be talking a lot about courage during your stay with us. The courage to take life by the reins, the courage to break free of unfair expectations, and the courage to be what you truly are, which is perfect. That's right, I said perfect. You may be asking yourself, Dr. Sullivan, how can a low-down, dirty addict like me ever be perfect? And my answer is, hey, don't talk about my friend like that. <laughs> okay, and look at the shoes, Vince. Those are awesome. Thank you. Fantastic. What's your name? Jay. Jay. Jay, you're beautifully put together. Ms. No, Gale. I only wear only, one. Only, 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 only one long one. one. Only one long. Yeah, only so, one. Um, what are you excited about in this year's uh, festival? Um, I haven't really had time to look over the schedule yet, but um, as my partner writes for the press, we try to see absolutely everything we have time for. So, how many in general or average do you see? How many films? Last year was my best. I did 80. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm determined to break 100 this year, determined. Okay. I, I believe that you can do it. If you can wear that earring and those shoes, you can break 100. Well, thank you. Let's see the back of your try. hair. Look at that, it's a Qigong. Space. I was really excited when I heard about a blackjack team of all Christians. I was like, that's ridiculous. I play uh, on a blackjack team, most of you know. One thing that makes our team very different is that we're almost entirely made up of Christians. It doesn't seem like <laughs> one of the most noble things a person could do in the world, but at least we can liberate the money from the clutches of those who would use it for ill purposes. <laughs> I mean, that's a start. Are you one of the card counting Christians? I am. I am, or I was. I mean, this is a this is a real team based in Seattle, um, not unlike the the MIT team they might have seen in the movie Twenty One. Okay. And uh, took it to casinos and, for a few and, years. And and you isn't it? I thought it was illegal to count cards. No, it's absolutely legal. But don't let anyone tell you otherwise. But if they catch you? If they catch you, they have a number of options. They can say, please don't play blackjack. Or they can say, you will be trespassed and escorted out of the casino and don't come back and you'll be arrested. But that's that one's pretty rare. Most, most of the time it's, please don't play blackjack anymore. You're welcome to play anything play else in the house. house. Um, how was it to put, make this film? What was the process like for you? Fun, well, hard, everything? Well, we had the director is Brian Storkel, and he followed us around with cameras. The hard part is getting into casinos. Okay. So he, he... Oh, with the camera. Right. Right. So he, especially when you're filming a movie about people who are beating the casino at their own game. Right. So what, what did you do? Did you make a lot of money doing it? You know, in the end, it's a very regular job. Oh. Uh, the, there are a few components. There are investors, there are managers, and there are players. Uh, so the players are using, essentially, somebody else's money. You know, when you're uh, playing with someone else's money, you also don't have to assume the risk of uh, a night's big loss all on your own back. So. God knows all of my needs, and he knows exactly what order the cards are in the shoe. The film I'm most excited to see is How to Die in Oregon. I'm actually gonna take a pen and write a prescription for something that will end someone's life. With Death With Dignity, it gives me a chance to think about how I wanna leave things with them at the end. Cody's choice is her pride in herself and her pride in us and our pride in her. I'll know when my life isn't worth living anymore. In which case, that choice will seem easy and obvious. I'll be grateful. Well, people are streaming in, they're getting ready to uh, see the screening, the opening night film, which is called The First Grader. We've got a couple more things we want to do, so uh, hang with us, but it's all just about to start. So we have general admission through doors D, E, F, and G. If you have a reserved seating card, you're going to either end. Um, so, hey, we are here with uh, Taylor Gooderson, and Taylor, I spit out your gum in my hand. Thank you. Say it's blue. You sure? You Kinda, want to I, I will. I'm fine. Now, um, so what's the name of your movie? My name, uh, the name of my movie is Old Goats. Old Goats, and it sounds really hilarious. Uh, tell us what it's about. It's about three old men. I call it Mumblecore for senior citizens. 
And uh, yeah, it's three old men who uh, are still confused and have insecurities and are searching for new and exciting things in their life. And you uh, cast real old men. They're playing themselves? Kind yes, of? I cast three old men, none of whom had acted before, and they more or less play themselves. Um, their characters, they don't live the way they live in real life, but the people they are, their personalities yeah. are them. And it's all improv. The dialogue's all made up, so wow. they are being themselves. I know we possess powerful tools for our survival, but few of us realize our very own potential. A good life is one of risks, coupled with, well, of course, creativity, love, and giving back within one's capacity to do so. If I learned anything over these many years, it is that the thrill of my life has been more in the chase and not so much in the catching. I guess some things never change. They just keep going around and around. Now, I've always been one who would rather jump before I'm pushed. So for me, it's sooner rather than later. So be it. How does it feel to have this film, this is a feature, mm -hmm. in its sip? What does this feel like? It's wonderful. Our goal uh, when we were making this film was to get it into SIF. And you made that it. That was our goal. Um, that's what I was telling everyone who was in it while we were filming it. Yeah. That was what we were trying to do. Yep. And so we're here now. You're, you're, so you, you wrote, produced, direct? Well, yes, yeah. I did write. I mean, we did. There yeah. was a script. Yeah. And yeah, wrote, produced, edited. shot, edited. Uh, all with a producer and collaborator, Jonathan Boyer, who also yeah. did all the lighting and audio. Two-man show. Two-man show. That's fantastic. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And um, I'll give you here. My gum's yeah, back. All can, right. Yeah, you can take Thanks it. Thanks a lot. Okay. All right. I have to go back to prison tomorrow. Do you have maybe 30 bucks? Are you going to you see? You don't need to pay me back. Yeah, I need a time. Can I need a time. Still a long way to Seattle. Our number and location. Email 2537. I'm in Seattle. Yeah, don't forget. You need to be back by tomorrow. Your money. Do you want me? Nice to meet you. I'm Hulu. Nice to meet you, man. Why'd you ask me for the money? You are saying yes. I see you here when you get out. Where are you from? I'm from San Francisco. So you came up for this? I did. I came all the way from San Francisco see? and I brought the sun with me too. Oh, you totally did. You didn't bring the fog, just the no, the sun. I nice. left the fog there. Yeah. Yeah. You <laughs> know, a little sunshine, a great movie. Why not, right? He, he smells really good, too. Oh, thank you. you. Know, you it's Chanel. Really good. It's Chanel. <laughs> I'm, oh, my gosh. How's it going? I'm going really well. So, wait, your brothers? Oh, I, no. No. No, no, no. Brothers from another mother. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, what's your name? Jason. 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 Really? Yes. You're both Jason? Yeah, but he spells it with a Y. It's different. Right. Yeah. What do you mean with a Y? J A Y S O N. Okay, and your dad's name was Jay, so uh, okay, so you I'm kind of put together. Son. Now you're Happy. having um, you're having your cocktails, and you got your perfect, your awesome shirts on. Oh yes. Now do you do you do you do Sif every year? We do this, this is every this is year. First. This, this is the first year we've yeah. done it together. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And are you are you gonna see more than one film? I think so. Right? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So let's do a little cheers. Cheers. Cheers, cheers to, to Sif. Sif. To the beginning. To the beginning. You can sip now. Oh good. Oh. Your wristband. Are good after the screening over at the after party. That's all I got. Mm. Well, you open it.
Sunday Night Film has started. I mean, SIF 2011 has kicked off, and that gives me a chance to get into this VIP lounge. No one's here anymore, of course. And I can eat some of this delicious uh, veggie platter. Kind of old, a little bit weird, but still kind of tastes good. So here's what you want to do, you guys. You want to pick up a guide. They're available all around town. Go through this thing. Pick out a few films that you want to see. Even if you only see one film in this year's festival, it is totally worth it. So enjoy the festival. Cheers to you. Cheers to SIF. See you at the movies. Non-alcoholic. Kind of a bummer. <laughs>